our Kishen Thompson, um, Daniel, him look confident like he has been here before. Any man in his first major championship anywhere who is going to start off a race by screaming out on the top of his lungs shows you how confident he is. Like you, we had a bittersweet moment. We had some very big highs and there were some lows. Welcome to another episode of Paris Today, powered by Flow. I'm your host, Trishana McGowan. Back with me, sports reporter from the Jamaica Observer, Daniel Blake. Hi, right, good afternoon, Trishana. Good afternoon to you too. And joining us for the first time, we have Davia Nugent. He's a, sp he's a track and field analyst and now a host on radio. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Trishana. And good afternoon to everybody watching. Yeah, so like I said, a bittersweet moment. We had some very highs and we were, and the world, including us, were dealt mm -hmm. some lows. Let me let me bring you in as our guest mm -hmm. and then go to the regular man, Daniel Blake. Um, yeah, the highs. Let us yeah. start there. It's easier to start on the high mm -hmm. and then we can go to the lows. Yeah. Big moments for us in the field events. Big moments for us in the field events. Um, particularly happy for, for Ranjindra Campbell. Um, he's had a very tough time at it at the international events last year at the World Championships. Three throws, three falls. Yeah. Um, World indoors this year three throws, three faults. And people were genuinely starting to ask questions about whether or not he has the mental fortitude to go up against the world and execute on the day. Um, 22 five to win the bronze medal today was in silver medal position for a very long time. Um, that's very, very close to his own, own national record of 22-2-2. Um, two, two. So yeah. it shows that on the day with the lights on, as they are now, <laughs> he can he execute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was. Yeah. I, he, he had me nervous for a bit, mm -hmm. but based on how the field event athletes were doing this season, um, I've penciled them in for a number of medals. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel, when you looked at um, Shanika Ricketts as well in the women's triple jump, Rahindra getting the job done, uh, a big moment adding to the caliber of the field event athletes on the global stage. Yeah, it, it, it's a huge thing. And I think that's that shows growth in our track and field in that, um, like I mentioned um, on, a, on a previous platform, the fact that we've we've had the women's 100 today and we had a four by four relay event for our two medals to come from the men's shot put and the women's triple jump shows that we have really elevated not just being um, a sprint nation but you know we can compete elsewhere um rajindra was very um good but he was also very fortunate because he ended up <laughs> getting that big throw early on and then the conditions ended up you know not working in the favor for for some of the other favorites um shanika we thought could have potentially gotten that gold with um yulimar rojas not there but to win an olympic silver medal is still huge um Obviously, she may have probably wanted to, to get over that 15 meter mark because nowadays you need to do that to, to get gold. Um, but to get an Olympic silver medal um, is is no no feat to take lightly. So um, yeah. it's a great day for, for Jamaican track and field in, in my eyes. I like that term mm. that him end on. It's a yeah. great day for Jamaica's track and field. Yeah, because field. too often, I think people forget the field when athletes are just as important and they're not done yet, you know? No. Because, like I said, I have penciled them in for a number of medals. They're not done yet. Um, the men, um, long jump and triple jump to come. And we should see some more fireworks. And you know what happened, though, with the field events, um, gentlemen? People, like I said, it's like people look to them just in case something not going right mm -hmm. on the track. But I think you think that is shifting, Daniel? Um, or it has? I think that it's, it's a bit of both. I still think that there are Jamaicans who see the the field athletes as as um a, a side event in a sense um and sometimes the way that it's broadcast and the way that it's reported on sometimes it feels like that um obviously we were all looking forward to to the women's 100 meters i don't know if anybody was looking forward to the mixed relay um, <laughs> but but i'm saying that the track <laughs> events again the track <laughs> the track events are usually the marquee but knowing that we had a legitimate gold medal process in Shanika Ricketts in, in the triple jump. Rajinja obviously had a chance. Um, so I think that 
more the more and more these things happen the the more our mindset starts to change yeah i agree with you on that i think we have we have we have grown um i think we're maturing as people you know jamaicans regarding our, our watch of the sport yeah definitely um more and more you hear people asking about field events um ha uh, happenings and uh, somebody who um, reports on the field events um daniel uh, uh, on track and field sorry somebody who reports on track and field daniel you can confirm this as well more and more people are asking me about well what happened in the long jump what happened in the mm -hmm. triple jump mm -hmm. um five six years ago you never had anybody wanting to concern themselves with, with what happened at the, the the high jump no everybody um what happened to christoph what happened to Romain? so it is changing and it will continue to change as the, the athletes get more and more medals that part but it shouldn't even be that um you know them getting medals but <laughs> um we're happy for them you know like i said getting such historic feat for us today mm -hmm. after we were we were thrown some punches we were thrown some punches the 100 meters um the news out of it i think you know not just had us as jamaicans uh in tears mm -hmm. maybe not literal tears mm -hmm. but you know heartbroken on oh, shelly and fraser price uh was we were told she would not show up for the semifinals and then uh we saw we saw our youngster 19 year old mm -hmm. going to the final and putting her best foot forward for me when when i heard the news i i must say i was heartbroken mm -hmm. um, because i know this is our final goal yeah and i was like hoping she would be there in the final she would have been yeah she would have been in that final you know and i wanted that for her daniel yeah and I think the fact that she did what she did in the heats, it kind of made us, you know, a bit more excited. Yeah. Uh, I know that she had her, her worries throughout the season, but once we saw her in the heats, it was just like, you know, Shelly coming for it. So, um, for her to you know, seeing the, the DNS was, was very disappointing. Um, and knowing that this was her last individual event at the olympics you really wanted her to go out on a high you know get the fans to really rally behind her um but it, it's just really unfortunate but i i don't want people to think that this is i guess doomsday in a sense because she's had a fantastic career oh to to win gold in 2008 2012 <laughs> She's to, to medal in 2016 and 2021 this is her fifth olympics yeah. so and it's 37 years so old. it's not it's not the end of the world she's she's still an icon she's still a legend it, yeah. it's just an unfortunate way to go out and and i think for me had she gotten to the final and gotten to on the podium or not even on the podium um she's still an icon like daniel would have said you know she has done her body of work Mm -hmm. speaks for itself and that cannot be erased because of an injury and a, and a, and a do not start um let us see how well if she will be able to show up for the relays but let us touch on tia clayton mm -hmm. 19 years old her first olympic games what a debut for the youngster what a debut for for the youngster at the start of the year many folks didn't even see her making our, our finals at, at the national trials many folks even on social media were telling me you're a madman for even thinking that she would make the finals at our trials mm -hmm. and she ends up making the olympic um finals it's it's a transitional year for jamaica on the traditional big three i mean like i don't i don't hold nobody because when them hear this but the, the big tree get chopped down um <laughs> it is a fact the big tree <laughs> the big tree get chopped down you mean to get chopped down in what way um you have that, to be specific i can't just leave my in, people them hanging in that me ready to take them on like you know in that we're, we're not going to see the big three again i don't believe we'll we'll see the big three that's shelly uh, together. together together we may see choose we, your words carefully we may okay. see sharika and elaine and even shelly um coming back but i don't see like we had the one two three i don't yeah. see that happening again what is happening now is a transition and tia is the spearhead of that transition because there's so much talent to come her sister tina um listening in college Crystal's crystal slowly um, Davis. so much yeah. talent coming up Reed, a lot there. yeah so, Nelson also there yeah and i think these girls starting next year they're going to start to step forward and and be the sharp of the jamaican sprinting spear yeah uh, daniel that changing of the guard can 
it, it, the Jamaicans don't handle that term very well <laughs> because they sometimes see it as, oh, we are, we are get rid of our count out the, the seniors now. Sharika Jackson just turned 30 years old, July 16. Um, Elaine Thompson era is 31, they're about, mm. or 32. Um, Shelly and Fraser Price, we already know, 37 years old. Changing of the guard, is it, that's what, is it, are you there and excited about, you know, to see what, of the youngsters coming i mean changing of the guard has never mattered to me i'm always no matter who lines up whether elaine decides to run at 48 and she's still qualifying for the team i yeah. i really just want to see our best talent or most committed talent out there um i know jamaicans kind of worry and and be, be like you know who is going to step up but we literally have tia clayton there we we have you know other women on the rise you know we saw crystal slowly this year a name that many people thought probably wouldn't even mm -hmm. be in contention so there's going to be some years where people are just going to literally rise from the ashes so i don't think we should ever be worried about mm. um the changing of the guard we should just support who we have in in whatever race at whatever time i agree with you um but a next a next thing about changing of the guard it was the moment for our caribbean neighbor yeah. to lift that um gold medal and title um davian daniel and i and even andre low mm -hmm. on our previous shows we did factor julian alfred to be a part of mm -hmm. the podium no surprise that she has won um, uh, based on her talent. Absolutely no surprise that, that she would have won. Um, that 10 7, 7 8 that she did early in the season was a signal to the world that she was genuinely going to come to the Olympics and she was going to challenge for that gold medal. Many piece, people had Chakari as, as a favorite, including myself. Mm -hmm. But I think no seeing what happened today and what has happened in the past i think some questions about shakari's ability even with a, a world championship gold medal from last year some questions have to be asked about her ability to ex execute under pressure because the truth is Yes, last year was a world championship finals, but she was all the way out in lane nine and nobody was watching her. The pressure was really off of her. This year, she's in the middle of the track. The pressure is on. And, and she failed to have got Yeah, so you see where I'm going to go with this, folks? <laughs> I, I understand the reasoning because she also had the worst reaction time out of all the athletes. Um, and, you know, when she came out initially out of the tunnel, she kind of looked a little nervous not saying that she was but it was almost like okay all eyes are on me now mm -hmm. um so she had the terrible start she did come back and and again <laughs> make w winning a silver medal is is nothing to really no, it's not to, well, to, have, to step down on when you have your country um you know telling the rest of the world that you're the fastest woman alive and the fastest man. well at least she didn't say it which is good unlike Okay. Some other folks. Some other yes. folks. <laughs> but guess what? As we segue into some other folks, that some other folks almost miss a beat this morning. Oh. Or he did miss a beat. Uh, but let us start with our Jamaicans, Kishane Thompson. I mean, at this point in time, the man I show always say, the crown is mine unless I don't want it. <laughs> um, Oblique Seville, also very comfortable. Um, Akeem Blake, first phase of his race, wasn't the smoothest, but he looked good. Um, let me let me let me start there because more, before we get to people who almost missed them miss miss the ball um or, or kishane thompson um daniel him look confident like he has been here before any man in his first major championship anywhere who is going to start off a race by screaming out on the top of his lungs <laughs> shows you how confident he is and, the anime, um, the watching. <laughs> look, and and that's and that's fine because those characters in anime usually win um to do what he did in 10 seconds he to me he didn't even look like he broke a sweat at any point it was just like all right i'm just here to show off the new jamaica kit and i'm back inside <laughs> um he just looked really great oblique was was also quite relaxed even though you know we're focusing on kishan a lot but he looked really good um akeem just needs to fix a little part of his execution um but very happy that all three of our men have made it and and looking pretty pretty solid new gen you know it's it's kind of funny um because after usain bolt retired in 2017 
there was a, a falling away of the male sprinting and for those seven years or so it was the females who were carrying our sprint hopes the Shelleys, the Elaines, the Sharikas and now to see that there's a changing of gods on, on the women's side to now see the men <laughs> step forward it, it, it feels kind of odd for me but yes the, 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 the two big Jamaicans they looked very good um, Oblique looked like what is this? Is, is this a, yeah, looked very good Good. Just like a one, yeah, man. It, that that's training session and yeah. sub ten. Uh, as to Kishen, uh, as Daniel said, Mando's easy. Yeah. Um, uh, Keen Blake, though, I'm I'm concerned about his start because more than likely he's going to be the the opening leg on our four by one, and he's had some issues with with that start. It's not the first time he had it at the. But Alpha the thing is, with having one. those issues for the last mm -hmm. two seasons, he has not had those problems regarding the start in the relays. But right. whereas 100 meters individual event is concerned, right. he uh, he not smooth enough for me out of the blocks no. because again, um, similar to what we saw just before um, at a recent Diamond League meet in London, um, where he stumbled out of the block. Mm -hmm was a same problem the same problem he had again this morning but i think um for three men to be like you said into the semi-finals i am now dreaming of three of them in the final possible i, I would love that moment for us that would be big for me uh the medal that should come i'm looking forward to that but having three of them in the finals would be a dream at this moment that would be <laughs> spectacular um obviously as the only woman here yeah and and to know that we were expecting it for the women's 100 <laughs> no and see, no if but, it, I said, if I no, said, you no, know say, as the only woman here no but but knowing that it hasn't been done for us in in an extremely long yeah. time for to have three men in the final would be would be spectacular and hoping that akim fixes um whatever he needs to fix because there could be a possibility where we could have our men finishing in the top four top five yeah that would be good for us um and when you look at the team you know, the relay to come but let us talk about we we'll just uh, give him a little one tar because the, he has been talking about being the fastest man at that right when in fact he isn't but anyway that's a conversation for another time um noah lyles misjudged the field this morning and i was i'm not gonna say i'm surprised he did it but more disappointed because i i tell people that i've seen i've watched enough track and field to know some of the best and top co um, competitors not even thinking of that you go out and you run mm -hmm. i can and, and all i always tell people why i love vcb veronica campbell brown she takes nothing for granted she does show up and Mm -hmm. and she handle business because it is business by not taking the field for granted but you know in quick summary did, were you surprised that he took the field do i have 30 seconds i can tell a quick story about him about myself oh so i we never do track and field before so I, I can't talk about my track and field um experience but mm -hmm. i can talk about my experience as a as a person mm -hmm. no i remember when i was going to dintel um you know as a youngster yeah i have a look couple of female for talk to and i remember <laughs> I'm a dapper dog and I'm going down to the, the, the third year block now and you know, rainfall, but we don't <laughs> want to do a skip and jump and thing. So I'm with my chest out and going and I slip and mm -hmm. I fall and it's the most embarrassing moment of my life. Mm -hmm. why, why I mention that story, I think that is what Lyles is doing now. He's putting on a show. He's pushing out him chest. And, and he's going to slip and fall. He may very well slip and fall because Father what you God. need to do is not put on a show, Mr. Lyles. is execute. But geez, uh, Daniel, were you surprised that he did that though? Took the field for granted or underestimated the field? No. Yeah. <laughs> because that's who he is. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to be confident and boastful and everything, but to take... Uh, Olympic field for granted any man who is willing to call himself the fastest man alive knowing that he's, he's not, not shows you a lot about how he views himself um so you know maybe maybe him run nine three in training and we don't know <laughs> maybe 
So we're just going to have to wait till the semis and the final because he he may legit be the fastest man alive. Who knows? But he will have to prove it. Well, guess what? It's on that now. And guess what? Tomorrow for the semifinals and the finals of the men's 100 meters, we're going to see it all unfold. So you don't want to miss that. And we have a lot more of Jamaican athletes that will be in action, you know, because we'll just uh, get started with our medal hunt. So stay tuned to our platform for everything so that's all the time we have for you for today on paris today powered by flow i'm your host Rishana mogowan and my lovely co-host i like to call him that daniel blake sports reporter from the jamaica observer and thank you so much for joining us you enjoyed yourself yeah man wonderful discussion david nugent <laughs> track and field analyst and radio host and we want you for combat because you enjoyed yourself stay tuned to our social media pages for everything from paris that's a wrap. Is a wrap.